A charity worker from Lancashire has been to Pakistan to see how volunteers and funding from the Northwest is helping those affected by the floods. The Minaj Welfare Foundation, which is based in Nelson, still fears more needs to be done to help the millions at risk. Yeah, in a moment, we'll be speaking to Adnan Sahil from the charity, who's just spent nine days in remote parts of the flooded region. But first, we have his video diary of what the latest situation is there. We're heading north towards Noshera, where we have 47 families. That's about 500 people there. There's about 20 to 30 different volunteers of Minhaj Welfare Foundation. We actually go to the relief camp area to visit these people and to see what they are actually going through at this present moment of time. There's uh, problems with food, there's problems with water, there's problems with shelter as well. Right, you can see right at this present moment of time, uh, houses are destroyed. They, they tell me that at least 10 feet of water uh, has risen in some parts and it's even extended to 15 to 20 feet. Beside me you see people living on the roads as well. Uh, people don't have nothing at all uh, to, to do. You can see beside you the different work uh, that the volunteers here have established uh, since establishing this uh, about 13 to 15 days ago. All of them are getting the basic essentials requirement, what they require as well. <laughs> Cholera is, is a big problem here uh, in many relief camps as well. Uh, and this child here, uh, he's got a problem uh, with his heart. Heart problem. Heart problem. Uh, and the doctor is, is checking him as well. This is clean water. This water tank is also provided to those uh, affected uh, in this relief camp. The, mashallah, the brothers here are now distributing uh, rice biryani. Mashallah, there's, there's uh, potatoes, there's chicken, there's rice provided to the uh, affected of the uh, camp as well. Uh, well, Adnan is here with us. Uh, just tell us of some of the stories that you heard when you were out there. Uh, the first day was quite shocking for me. I uh, just landed at the Islamabad airport and we travelled about 45 hours to uh, Noshera. And as soon as we got to the relief camp as well, I spoke to some of the victims. Uh, one woman, she told of uh, she lost her husband. Uh, three of her children had been lost in the uh, flooding. She was only there with her daughter-in-law as well. And she was just crying and crying because she was trying to look for her children as well. She had lost hope as well because time had just passed and it was like 14 to 15 days. She couldn't find her children as well. Uh, stories like this just set us back as well because uh, we actually didn't know the, uh, the vast level of destruction that the flood actually caused. And you were saying that um, earlier that some people had had to leave their houses when they were cooking and the floods came and then they couldn't go back for their children. Tell us some of the other stories. Yeah, there. one woman, she said that she was cooking um, and then all of a sudden the flood had actually hit the house as well and they just had left everything. And when I mean everything, they actually had, had left their, their children there as well. Um, they've actually, they went outside the flood area to a dry area and then the father went back to collect his children. Um, so when he went to collect his children on the boat, um, he tried to get hold of one or two of the children, but they just slipped away from his hands and they just drowned into the, into the water as well. And, and of course in situations like that, uh, disease sets in particularly with children, doesn't it? And, and the crops are absolutely yes. ruined, uh, gone forever and, and uh, animals too, starving to death. Yeah, it's just, it's just not human beings, it's animals, crops, everything is basically dying out now as well. Uh, a lot of children are getting uh, diseases, uh, cholera and waterborne diseases are widespread in many rural areas in, in Pakistan as well. And some of the images that we actually had shown uh, to our viewers as well and to some of the people, uh, when we got back in the UK, they were just uh, they were shocked, they couldn't see 
they couldn't believe that something like this could exist. Uh, so, uh, sorry, sorry. I, was just, I was going to say, do you, do you not feel a bit overwhelmed by it? Because, I mean, obviously you're trying to help you set up these relief camps, but you must just feel like a tiny speck when you get there in the middle of this chaos. We, we do. You know, initially when we went there in Pakistan as well, we had this intention that we're going to help everyone. We want to do this, we want to do that. But when we saw what had happened, it was impossible to actually help everyone. This is a country that has a population of over 165 million people and so when many... When you're pe talking about that uh, help, um, is enough g getting through? Because people here have been very generous, they've raised money. Is, is the aid getting through where it needs to? I mean, how much does it cost to keep one person going in food and clothing? For, and for example, to keep one family going for one month, uh, it'll cost about £100. That would provide them basic essentials such as food, and, and water. And is the money and is the aid getting through and going to the right Some places? areas it is going. Uh, you have to understand that the situation is very hard to get across to certain areas. The bridges have collapsed as well. The roads are filled with uh, 10 to 15 inches of feet of water. So for people or for trucks to get across to the other side, it's very, very hard as well. Uh, some areas, uh, essentials are actually reaching there, but certain areas are not re receiving aid and it's very hard at the present moment of time people have to sit in the heat 42 to 43 degrees of heat hitting on mm, them uh, while starving oh, and, and, it's, and it, the smell yeah. actually you can, you can imagine the situation there at this present moment of time it's given us a real insight it, it uh, does uh, it gave me a real insight yeah. as well to what's actually happening thank you so much for coming in no and problem. telling us about it thank you